Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspired by dreams. Dot shop. Dress outside of the box. Okay. At this point, I should be almost on the way back. But anyway, today's today's topic, what we're covering today is really crazy. It's bare minimum parents. And I just thank God that I didn't have bare minimum parents. I had a good family. So I grew up, I just thank God it's a blessing. But there's some people out there that they have a problem with this, especially Gen Z. So let's just take a look at what people have to say about bare minimum parents and try to get this understanding. What is this whole bare minimum stuff all about? Let's get it. feed my children, I provide them with clothes, and I put a roof over their head. I do my part. And my response is, hmm, congratulations for doing the bare minimum. You need to brag about bare minimum parenting. You don't get to guilt trip me with the fact that you fed me, kept a roof over my head or clothes on my back. But then again, some kids don't even get that. So thank you for doing just enough to make sure I didn't end up dead. News flash, I didn't ask to be here, but sometimes you still made me feel guilty. So thank you for doing just enough to stay out of jail. I mean, you're required by law to take care of me, but there's more to parenting. Did you uplift me when I failed? This isn't about not having enough shoes or toys. It's more so about how anytime I tried to voice an opinion or express myself, you saw it as just noise. I was a child who only had the right to be quiet. Now I'm an adult who, instead of opening up and expressing my feelings, I prefer silence. And I didn't need you to be one of my little friends. I needed guidance. I ignored so many life lessons. You were right about so many things. I'm not saying I would have been perfect, but I would have heeded more warnings if only you had worked on your delivery. But no, there's a toxic household full of yelling and disrespect. You made toxicity normal to me. Calling me out of the name that you gave me. Isn't that crazy? I was a child. I didn't need to learn from my mistakes. I needed you to do everything possible to save me. I don't mind that one. Honestly, it taught me to only depend on myself. I was a child who needed saving. Now I'm an adult who hates asking for help. I wish you would have taught me about healthy love. Instead, I have attachment issues and crave affection because we barely hug. Why didn't you warn me about narcissists or what type of person was worth waiting for? And the fact is, you probably won't have the answer when I ask this, but why didn't you say I love you more? Honestly, I truly don't even blame you because when you were a kid, no one saved you. So you took what you knew and made do. You're still my superhero. Those were just a few things I needed you to hear. So with that said, I appreciate all your sacrifices, all the working doubles and long nights. I don't know how you managed to stay sane. And I'm grown now, so I no longer use you or my childhood to blame. But understand, even though I love you to death, we will never parent the same. Monique is a prime example of those parents that be like, I put a roof over your head, I put food on your table, so therefore I'm a good mother. I put clothes on your back, I made sure you ate every day. You mean you did the bare minimum so I wouldn't starve? You gave me a jacket so I wouldn't freeze to death? You gave me shelter because you had me and you had to shelter me? I ain't asked to be here. I don't know why parents feel like doing the bare minimum is all you need to do to be a parent. Like, I hope you gave me food to eat because I would have called CPS. I would have had that number on speed dial. Monique, your son came to the internet begging for help, begging for his mom. And your response was to post text messages from three years ago. I don't know if you people were in 2024. And judging by the way he responds to the messages, you been lost your son, gang. I literally just said this. Stop trying to prove that you're a good mother to the internet. We don't care. If anything, we're cutting your ass because clearly you're not a good mom. Go hug your son. I just said this. I said it twice. I'll say it again. Go hug your son. That's what your son needs right now. Your son needs his mom. Y'all need therapy. Because for the simple fact that I didn't even know you had children, bro. That says more than enough. That actually speaks volumes. Like, I literally did not know you had kids, gang. Are you that great of a mother that... I, we didn't know. Your son had to come to the internet and was begging for help. That's what he was doing. He was begging for help. Parents need to know that it's more than just the bare minimum survival things that we need when, when raising a child. Y'all be putting us through so much mental traumas that it's not even funny. And especially the old school parents, they, ne they have so much pride. They never feel that they're wrong when it comes to anything. And I don't know what it is, but why do they feel like they don't they don't need to apologize or they can't apologize? Asking Gen X or a boomer to apologize to a younger generation is like telling a crackhead that they just need to stop taking crack. 
they're not going to do it. And if they do try to apologize, they would never straight up and be like, well, I was wrong, I'm sorry. They're gonna start, they're gonna wanna cook you a dinner. But I'm just saying, go go hug your son, Monique. That's all I'm saying, just go hug your son. The internet is the worst place you wanna take your family problems to because we're gonna eat it up. And we're just gonna twist and turn it and twist and turn it and into something that's probably not. And Monique, I already got beef with you because you was dead talking shit about skin girls, but the moment you start losing weight, all of a sudden, you hate fat bitches. Which one is it? That's why I don't believe you. I don't believe you because you, you switch up too much. But I digress. I so after working in a nursing home and rehab center for a while, it became very clear to me that there was an epidemic of elderly people whose kids never came and saw them. And it was really sad, uh, but I didn't have any judgment towards the kids because there's also an epidemic of bare minimum parenting. And what that looks like is... I gave my kids food, clothing, and a roof over their head. Like, what more could they ask for? They should be thankful. So when the, you know, parents became elderly and wound up needing care, the kids gave them the bare minimum because that's what they were taught to give in this relationship. If you want better than that when you're older, you need to start treating your kids better now. And I don't care what you did and didn't have as a child growing up. If you want better from your children than the average elderly person that is left alone staring out the window for hours with no one to talk to, you need to start treating your kids better. You think there's an epidemic of disrespectful children. There is an epidemic of bad parenting. Don't go blaming all, all the adult children who give their parents exactly what their parents gave them growing up. It's not their fault. There wasn't a class in school on how to love and treat your parents better than they treat you. So you've got to educate your child on how much you love them. You've got to make a better connection with your child now. And that's how that works. It's not a tit for tat, it's not revenge. Um, it's just what you taught them coming into play years later. And it's a choice you make. Do you want to teach your kids how much you love them now so they'll show you later when you need them most how much they love you? Or would you rather just do the bare minimum now and get the bare minimum later? That's, that's your call. You do that. You make that choice. Not that. Just a thought. Okay, I had an epiphany on Friday and it's kind of blowing my mind. So I've known the majority of my adult life that I have daddy issues, but I've never been able to sit there and say like, this happened in my childhood, which correlates to me now as an adult until the epiphany. So growing up the ages of like 12 to 22, I didn't live with my dad. I moved out when I was 12 to go live with my mom who lived an hour away from him. And my dad wasn't abusive anyway, but I would say he was mildly neglectful. I just, at 12 years old, I just knew I wasn't a priority in my dad's life. And he would always show up for me just enough. Just enough. He would show up just enough to where I thought he was a good dad. He would show up just enough to where other people thought he was a good dad. If ever I had something going on, he was the first person I told because I wanted him there. No matter what it was, band competition, drama performance, you know, I wanted him there. I wanted my dad. 50% of the time, he wouldn't show up. The other 50%, he would show up but just enough. Meaning if it was a Friday night football game and I performed at halftime, he would show up right at halftime and leave two minutes into the third quarter, just enough time to say hi, goodbye. Sometimes he would show up to my stuff in Irish goodbye and my coaches would find me like crying in a corner and they had to console me because like, it's okay, he's really busy. And that's what I would constantly do my whole life is excuse it. Well, he's like, he lives an hour away. Well, like he's really busy. Well, he's just probably coaching. And it would make me so mad because my brother lived with my dad during his high school years. And my mom lived an hour from him. And my mom was at every single thing for my brother. She made sure to stay as much in my brother's life as possible, even with that hour distance. But for my dad, there was an entire school year I didn't go to his house because he had people living in his house I was not okay with. And he was totally fine not talking to me for that entire school year. The metaphor I've been using is if I was dehydrated in the desert, my dad would give me enough love and attention to keep me alive but never to quench my thirst. He would give me just enough. Now, as an adult, when I'm dating, 
I accept the bare minimum. It's my friend's biggest complaint with me. They're like, why do you accept the bare minimum from these guys? Why do you do that? And I'm just like, no, like, you don't understand. Like, he works at a restaurant, so his hours are crazy. And, like, yeah, he had a free night the other night, but he wanted boys' nights, and I can't take that away from him. Like, I totally get it. And he was texting me all day, so it's fine that we haven't seen each other in a month and a half. Constantly making excuses for the men, giving me the bare minimum. And now, if someone gives me their full attention, they want me and there's no games, there's no anything, I'm the one that pulls back because I'm not used to getting 100% of the love and attention. I'm used to having to make excuses and to fight for just enough. Why? Men and dads doing the bare minimum and being congratulated for it is literally how our society works nowadays and I literally cannot wrap my mind around it. I just watched a video of a very pregnant mom talking about how her OBGYN shook her husband's hand and said, oh, you should be so proud of yourself that you've come to all of your wife's doctor's appointments. I'm sorry, what, is that not his child growing inside of this woman? Why would he not be at her doctor's appointments? These are the same men that will complain that they had to sleep on an uncomfortable bed for two nights after their girlfriend or wife just pushed a human out of their body. These are the same men that say, oh, I babysit my kids so my wife can take a shower or go to the grocery store or even have time to herself and go out with her friends. You're not babysitting. Those are your kids. Those are your kids just as much as they're her kids. And if they're not together, the absolute bare minimum is paying your child support and taking your kids 50% of the time. Or at least for the designated visitation you're supposed to take them. These are the same men that pay $200, $300, $400 a month and think they're funding their baby mama's life. Sir, that's one grocery trip. That's buying your kids one season's worth of clothes because they grow every year. Like you are just as much of a dad as I am a mom. Why is the weight of the world on every mom's shoulders while a dad gets congratulated for coming to a doctor's appointment? Like be so fu- Parents that think it's heroic to do the bare minimum are in the same category as other people who would do less if they could. So for example, an employer that pays minimum wage, like they legally have to pay minimum wage, but if that law didn't exist, they would go lower. And the same goes for creepy men who prey on young girls or young men. And the age is 18 consent in most states. And they would go lower if they could. If that law didn't exist, they would go lower. So these parents who believe that they are literally God's gift to earth by doing the bare minimum, by keeping their kid alive, by feeding their kid, by providing shelter, by providing clean clothes, giving them their basic needs, that they would go lower if they could. These people have no moral responsibility outside of the rules that have been placed upon them. So if they could, they would, which is a terrifying concept that if those rules were in place, I can only imagine the havoc in society, like everything always goes to chaos. But it's just really scary when you even have to argue with somebody that like, hey, this is the bare minimum. And they're like, yeah, you're right. I didn't need to do those things and it's like whoa 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 so you're telling me you want to do less than the bare minimum you're proud to do the bare minimum wow when it comes to bare minimum parenting all I can say is I thank God that I didn't have that type of dynamic growing up but it seems like you know I, I feel if you have kids you know you should love them unconditionally and just do the best for them so they can you know raise with a better insight of and just a better version of yourself and push them in a big in a better direction and sometimes people don't have it to do it and some people do so being having responsible parents is one thing but being ungrateful is another I don't know you guys let me know down below in the comment section what do you think about this whole minimum parenting I don't know it's like bare minimum of anything is not your best effort you guys let me know though until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. In the morning show, I'll be back soon. Alright?